Hello and welcome to Love Talk. And today we are going to be talking about the most powerful force in the universe, which is the power of love. We're talking about, however, true love, not fake love. Yeah, not passion or obsession, mm -hmm. but true love. And we will hear about uh, true love through uh, the guests that we have here today, mm -hmm. who, who can share with us mm -hmm. uh, what they've done through their true love. What That's happens right. through their true love. And why, maybe you say, James, why is love this powerful force that you're talking about? Because you forgive someone if they've hurt you, because you love them. And, and, and love can oversee the person's flaws, can, mm -hmm. you know, ignore the person's mistakes and look at the qualities. And sometimes the person has a lot of mistakes, but mm -hmm. the qualities make up for it. We're going to see what the people in London have to say about this. And when we come back, we'll be speaking to Roger and Carol Werner, who are here in the studio with us today. We'll be right back. How powerful do you think love is? I think it's, it's, it depends on you, which kind of person you are, so to say. If you're a dick, love doesn't mean anything to you, but let's say, if you're a nice person, love is, you know, the most important thing and for everything. Okay, so what would you do for love in case of your partner? I would do, I would do everything. I would say, me and my, me and my wife, we had this argument who should, if we, if we were in a situation where one could only live, it was a situation who should live. And it kind of came down to, if we had kids, then I should go for it. If not, I would save her. So it's kind of, you know, the conversation that we had. Well, I probably think love's actually the, probably the most powerful emotion. I mean, it's, love is like purest. It's, it's such a, a raw thing and it can, you know, bring people together. It can take people apart. It probably encompasses, you know, every single emotion possible, to be honest, you know. You can have anger, you can have passion, you can have, um, you know, all sorts of things. I mean, just like a social connection, you know, if you fall in love with someone, it's very deep. And I mean, it's pretty too deep for me sometimes, <laughs> if I'm completely honest, yeah. What would you do for love? Almost anything. I mean, pretty anything except for, like, killing someone else for love. But that's pretty, that's pretty my limit, I think. Okay, have you had any ex bad experiences in love? Um, well, actually, to be honest, I, I don't think I've properly been in love. I'm only, t I'm only 21, but I don't think I've really properly fallen in love with someone. So, I mean, I mean, I kind of got over those experiences quite quickly. You know, it's not like I was, um, you know, lying in bed all week, you know, eating like ice cream, you know, the kind of cliche when people break up. There's nothing ever like that, to be honest, yeah. You know how the saying, love is blind, do you think love is so powerful that it becomes blind? I suppose so, yeah, because, um, you know, you might think, like, when you see someone on a nice house, well, that's a pretty girl. But if you completely fall in love with them, you think she's the best girl in the world, you know. It doesn't matter what she looks like, you know. You're so taken by, you know, everything, her looks, personality, whatever, that, you know, she, she's the only one for you, I think, eventually. Yeah. So how powerful do you think love is? It's very powerful because love is about being uh, patient, having... Um, you know, to enjoy the moment with the person you love and just be happy to be alive. So this is love, for example, to be with you, a special moment, to be with your loved ones. So love for everybody. Cheers. Y saludos a México. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, they say that love overcomes all things, but is it really true? And what kind of love are you talking about? And certainly when, when you say that you love someone, you have to go beyond the person's flaws. But some things are more difficult to overcome than others. And we have a couple here with us today, mm -hmm. Roger and Carol Werner. How are you? Hi, okay. thanks for coming. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you for, for coming to the program. Thank you for inviting us to your program. It's a pleasure. We, we've known you for quite a while now, right? Mm -hmm. For quite a few years. But we, we'd like you to talk to people today about, first of mm -hmm. all, how you met. How, how was it when you first met? I don't know who wants to go first. <laughs> Um, we met over work basically, mm -hmm. um, I had a contract, I was in Milton Keynes working and the company I was working for had bought the company out that Carol was working for, mm -hmm. but HR personnel weren't doing their job or my bosses thought they weren't doing their job correctly after paying mm -hmm. a lot of money for it. So they asked me to go down and size up the company, see what the staff were doing, report back mm -hmm. 
and the only person I actually found working properly was my wife. <laughs> <laughs> she was the only good worker. Yeah, then. the others were skyping off and they were ex-government workers and mm -hmm. they, they sort of go at two in the afternoon and please themselves. Is that what attracted you to, to Carol, her work ethic? No. Yeah, <laughs> to some degree, yes. Well, you said yes, she said no. Uh, so much well. so that you notice her, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you see? What made you notice me was the incident. I think we had an incident at work yes. where um, I was doing. A I was working closely with Roger because I needed to help him with reports for the mm. system because I was running the payroll for the company. Mm -hmm. um, so in the process of helping with all the migration, um, what happened was I chew a lot. Mm -hmm. I chew, it's a bad habit, but I actually have to chew to think when I'm working with numbers. Mm -hmm. I need to chew. Mm -hmm. I need gum. So <laughs> he just came to me and said, I don't like women who chew. So when I'm around you, can you stop chewing? Mm -hmm. So when he was coming to me, I took off one afternoon, I took off the gum and then I put it under my desk. I know it's disgusting, <laughs> but I did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And um, he came and um, said, and he asked to use my computer. Mm -hmm. So I'd forgotten at that moment that I'd stuck my gum and it went <gasps> on his suit. So he's, oh. when he stood up, then he noticed the gum <laughs> had gone. story. <laughs> <laughs> had gone on his suit and he was so angry. And uh, I remember I said sorry and he wasn't having it. And I said, if there's another word you know that's better than sorry, then you need to tell me. Or I can take your trousers to be oh. dry cleaned right now. Cause and, and that was the beginning of the relationship. Yeah. <laughs> no, when I came back because I was upset, I didn't, because he mm. kept on, he made an issue out of it in oh. the open if office. If at that time you knew that a little bit of ice would have removed it instantly. I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh that my God. would have an argument. <laughs> yes, no, the argument yeah, started ice. that day. <laughs> a little ice cube will do the trick. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Tell, tell us something. I mean, you, obviously you're from different cultures, different yeah. backgrounds. Uh, you're from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe and you're East End London. East End London. So I mean when you began the relationship, I mean there were this differences of cultures. What were the, the little things that you saw were different that were difficult to get used to? Um I'm very loud and my husband's very quiet and he was mm -hmm. brought up in that kind of way. And mm -hmm. when I speak on the phone, my husband would say to me can you reduce your voice and it would make me angry because mm -hmm. it's not that I was being noisy, but even when I'm on the phone, I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because it's just different cultures. Mm -hmm. And um, not only that, the food, my husband can, will, would not try any African food. Mm -hmm. And it used to upset me because I would eat his food. So in the end, we used to have to cook two different meals. So mm. I'd have a meal for myself mm. and then a meal for, not <laughs> now, but at that point in our life, mm -hmm. I would have to cook the, that meal for him and then a meal for myself. Um, oh. It was difficult. <laughs> did, did these things cause arguments, Roger? I mean, in, in the yeah, beginning. Yeah, because I, I wasn't, I didn't expect or understand her culture. Mm -hmm. Um, and it took, a, it took quite a few years to understand mm -hmm. and learn mm -hmm. by looking at, not just at Carol, but at the rest of her brothers and sisters, see how they mm -hmm. behave mm -hmm. in the same manner when they get loud on the phone, they get excited and things like that. Because I'm an only child, so <laughs> when I'm around my space, it's very quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, I and, imagine. And she knows that. <laughs> the only child, no noise, nothing. <laughs> yeah. So you get used to your the quietness mm -hmm. and, you, and you don't mind your own, your own time, your own space together. When you when you're on your own, yeah. but for example, I, I mean, understand you. He's very much like yes. that as well. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I also don't like a lot of noise. But <laughs> tell me something. I mean, you 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 started this relationship. You got married. You've been together now for 14 years, right? Coming yeah. to 14. Coming to 14 years. Yeah. Um, and and there were these things in the beginning that were very different between both of yeah, you. Yeah, our cultures were different, but we also had family mm. that had issues with the relationship. Mm. Yeah. But did you, I mean, what, was there ever a point that you, you felt that your differences could hinder or, 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 or finish this relationship or doom the relationship? Um, no. Our relationship in the first year was mm. already doomed because I think about the time that we knew what we needed to do to stay together, mm. we were already contemplating contacting lawyers for a divorce. Really? Yeah. Wow. And you have been together for how long? We had just been married for six months. 
Mm. So that was that was a quick one. Mm. Yes, but we we all know that beginnings is, is, is difficult depending yeah. on on the background of the person. Mm. It, you know, it's adapting, isn't it? Yeah. It's mm. all about but adapting. But I mean, if the, if the beginning is difficult, and then you have the differences of culture, then it makes it. And we had yeah. family as well because my mother-in-law wasn't accepting a, an African right. wife for for the son, mm -hmm. and I had my family. Uh, my husband's age difference with me was a big issue. Mm -hmm. So both sides of the families, mm -hmm. there was no support for the marriage. Mm -hmm. But it, it's interesting because you see, Elena, people say that love overcomes all things and is so powerful that it overcomes all things. But at that stage, in spite of your love for each other, you were about to get divorced. Yeah. Because of all these little things, family <coughs> opposing you and the, the age difference and culture difference, this was taking a toll in, and you were about to get divorced, right? Yes. But you know, we, 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 we usually say here on the show that love is not something that, okay, you, you met and then you love each other. It's something that grows, mm -hmm. you develop, you know, patience, you appreciate one another, you understand, you make an effort, and that's how, and, and, and then love starts. Yes, what you're saying is so true, mm -hmm. because when I got married to my husband, I didn't love my husband. I was attracted to my husband, and to some degree, yes, there mm -hmm. was little, now I love the my husband. The longer you are together, the <laughs> yes. more you love one another. Yes, that, because I, mean, that's I what forgive, happens. I've learned to forgive, I've mm -hmm. learned to, that is true to love, fight, yes, now, now I love my husband because some things I don't even see them and I'm like, oh, don't Just worry about it. <laughs> it's too small. It? And it's interesting what you said because some people say that when you get married, the love starts to decrease over the years. With you, mm. you said it's increased. Mm. No. Um, you know, at the beginning of the relationship, we didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. We had to learn a lot about each other. Mm -hmm. The way I am, the way Roger is, and because um, I'm, I'm more of a doer kind of person, mm -hmm. where my husband is, he's a perfectionist and he's, he takes his time. He does not worry about things finishing as long as they're done perfect. And mm -hmm. I am, I'm, a, I'm not a warrior, but I need things to be started and to be finished, and I Quickly. need them done. <laughs> yeah. And so um, that, co that caused a lot of. Yeah friction between uh -huh. us mm -hmm. but the more we've known each other the more he knows how he needs to so my my strength supports him and his strength mm. supports me mm. and, and it works and you see love is is also not selfish mm. because for you to do all these things you need to be what mm. to be you know no let me not think about myself only let me see what he likes let me see why he's upset or she's upset. Yeah. Let me understand why. Mm. But we're going to do something. We're going to go into a, into a break. But you're going to see after the break, you're going to see two things. First of all, how love is not enough mm. for you to solve all the problems you have. If love was enough, then you weren't supposed to be um, getting div almost divorced mm. in the first six months. And the second thing you're going to see is the greatest pressure that Carol and Roger faced at the beginning of the marriage. We're going to see what's happening in the celebrity world and we'll be right back. David and Victoria Beckham spent some quality time together over this bank holiday weekend as it was David's 38th birthday. The Beckhams made the most of the bank holiday break, making sure that David, who is currently splitting his time between London and Paris, spends time with everyone. Posh was said to have flown her 22-month-old daughter to Paris last Thursday for celebrations. The ladies enjoyed some shopping whilst the boys watched football. The whole family even squeezed in some sightseeing into their tight schedule with a visit to the Eiffel Tower for a fun day out. In the US, Adam Brody and Leeton Meester, although trying to get their romance out of the spotlight, they are always being spotted together. Leeton, who is most famous for her role as Upper East Side Princess Blair Wardoff, and Adam Brody, who played Seth from the OC, went public about their relationship this year after rumours of the possibility of being together earlier in the year. Leeton celebrated her 27th birthday last month and was said to have received a very nice present from her boyfriend Adam. The couple cannot seem to get enough of each other while on set starring on an upcoming comedy Life Partners. That's all from the world of celebrities. Until next time, stay fabulous. Welcome back. I, I just want to go quickly to a, a Facebook comment that someone wrote here. We, we were asking how powerful is love? What, you, what would you do for love? And someone said, 
that uh, love is so powerful that it makes you do crazy things sometimes. What do you think? Well, Lauren? well, um, excuse me. If, if you do wrong things, crazy things, that's not love. Mm -hmm. That has to do more with passion, with not thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this, this temporary feeling of of, I don't know, it's a mixture of passion with, with mm -hmm. lust, with, you know, not thinking mm -hmm. and then doing crazy things that many people regret today. Yeah. You know, we, we hear so many stories mm -hmm. um, on the news we, about people who we kill. Could s we could say that love makes you do brave things, yes, not, not crazy no. things, but certainly mm. brave things. Yes. Now, the proof that love is not enough to make things work is that at the beginning you guys loved each other to a certain degree, but the marriage was about to break down, right? Yeah. Now, to make matters worse, you had a, a serious pressure because of your culture on the marriage. Yeah. Can you talk to us about that? Um, I had, uh, I couldn't conceive. I had polycystic ovary syndrome mm -hmm. and my husband had lost sperm count. So we had been mm -hmm. told oh, we're really doomed unless we went for IVF, but it wasn't guaranteed mm -hmm. that we could have a child. So coming from an African background, Everyone was saying, well, for your marriage, now you're married, if you don't have a child, mm -hmm. if uh, anything happens to that man, where are you going to have the children from? Mm -hmm. Because you're in the marriage, but you need to have children. Mm -hmm. So it was really a it's lot a of pressure. It's a big part of marriage, yeah. isn't it, for your yeah. culture? For our culture, it is, it, they think, they believe that if you have the child, the marriage is sealed. Mm -hmm. okay. But if you well, don't have a child, then... Your marriage is doomed. So in, well. in our case, our marriage <laughs> hasn't been sealed yet because we've been together for 12 years and we don't have children. <laughs> yeah. But according to your culture. Yeah, you know, so culture. Yeah, yeah, it was culture. And mm. how did you see that, Roger? I mean, was that a big deal for you? No, not really. As mm -hmm. much as I wanted more children, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a big deal at all. But I understood what Carol meant at the time, mm -hmm. that it was a deal from, from the African point of view. Right. I mean, thankfully, I mean, although this was a big, a lot of pressure on you, thankfully, not only did you have a son, yes, right? Uh, a, a wonderful son, mm -hmm. intelligent son. <laughs> yes, a very intelligent boy. Joshua, yes. right? Which we know. <laughs> Which we know very well. Very cute. You also had, was it a daughter as well? Yes, we've got a very strong-willed daughter as well. Oh my God. <laughs> so you, you got a, uh, a double double portion, double yes. blessing, yes. right? a really big blessing. Good. A bit of both. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I mean, but, but that is, that, that's interesting because mm. you see that with all, with all these difficulties that you, you had, these, all these things going against you, the problem with conceiving mm. in the beginning, the different cultures, the age gap, still you were able to, to get the marriage to work. What do you put that down to? We... We learned to sacrifice for each other yeah. because there is one word that changed our marriage. Mm -hmm. I got married to make Roger happy mm -hmm. and Roger got married to make me happy. Right. So that meant I needed to know Roger mm -hmm. and Roger needed to know me mm -hmm. because to make somebody happy, you actually have to know. Mm -hmm. It's like buying a perfume for somebody. My husband knows my favorite perfume. But if he goes and buys something else, I'll be like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But we've learned that, no, there are things that Roger likes. My husband loves his peace. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm a very bubbly, outgoing. I'm a doer, but I'm, I'm a, I've got the fun side to me. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that when I want to introduce fun to my husband, I have to do it slowly. In a quiet <laughs> way. <Yes. laughs> yeah, a more reserved way. In a very <laughs> reserved way. Mm -hmm. oh. And then he sees the fun to it. Yeah. But oh. it's been, I've learned, my marriage has made me more mature, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And as time goes up. by, don't you, don't you feel and see that uh, you, your love is able to overcome more and more things. Yes. Our marriage, it, because sometimes I have to wake up early. I'm not a morning person. My husband's a morning person. I'm, I'm more, I work till late and then I go to bed, but I can't wake up in the morning. But to this day, my husband wakes me up to go to work. Mm -hmm. to do the school run mm -hmm. <laughs> because I can't wake up in the morning but when people see me they think oh she's woken up by herself but my husband actually has to <laughs> call me and say it's time to get up now and go and have a shower or a mm -hmm. bath <laughs> so you, you add to you know each other's life yeah. 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 but yeah. something very important that you said and that's the key and I, I want people to understand that because a lot of people think oh you know if you love each other that's it but you said the key there that a lot of people want to get married so that someone can make them happy mm. and that's wrong. 
Or make mm-hmm. themselves happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you I want to get married because it's my plan. It's, yeah. it's something I want to do. I want to be married and happy. But the mm. truth is That's you so enter a relationship to make the other person happy mm. and the person to make you happy. Mm. And if both understand their roles, then the relationship will work. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Because with us, our finances... Be- at some point became an issue in our mm-hmm. marriage and that's when we learned about that little equation that mm-hmm. I need to make Roger happy and Roger needs to make me happy because I way, came from an African way. background where you believe the husband has to provide for me fully financially <laughs> and so um, I always expected too much so much from him mm-hmm. until I learned no I can actually make him be proud of me mm-hmm. and then I saw myself excelling in ways that I never knew I could excel. Mm. So, Roger, do you see this marriage? Is it is it what you expected it to be, or is it more than what you expected more. it to be? No, she's she's got a good sense of humour now, which she never had. <laughs> she never had before. No. <laughs> Everything was too serious. Right. Very fine line. No jokes. She wouldn't watch a serious program on the TV. Mm-hmm. And she said, "Well, that's English humour." Now she looks at English humour and she laughs. Oh, now you and understand English humour. Welcome yes, to the club. Yes, and she's good fun to be with. <laughs> so you don't mind sitting down next to her because you know it was a funny programme. She will laugh at the programme and understand mm-hmm. it now, mm-hmm. which is good. You see, as time goes by, love gets better and love mm-hmm. overcomes even more. Yeah. Mm. What you overcame in these 13 years, yeah. shall we say, you will overcome even more in the in the next 10 mm. years or along those next yeah. years yeah. i believe because that. that's what yeah. love does love grows and, and overcomes yeah and so we, many see, more we see our love running around the floor as a two-year-old yeah. and, it, and it, it's fantastic just to see something so lively yeah. i'm jumping up and down and wanting to dance and we just see it see, and can, can you wonderful. cope with all that roger well you have to if you, yeah. want, if you want the blessing it goes with, it goes with being a dad that's mm. right he sacrifices because Roger is a peace man. He loves Imagine his space. His kids are not very yeah. quiet. <laughs> no, they're all a lot of work. But mm. we've all learned that we need to give him his time at certain points. So. And, and actually, it's funny you say that because let me tell you something. We, we went, uh, we did a challenge here, Elena and I. We, we decided to do something that the other one likes. So Elena loves baking and sometimes... And, and other and, things. And, and other things. But I, I tried <laughs> to bake with her. And I like to do extreme things. So we went rock climbing and it was awesome. I really liked it and I tried to get Elena into it. And I was trying to motivate her to say, you can do it and l- let's see how she did it. We'll come back to the studio and discuss that in a minute. We'll be right back. Elena and James off on the uh, slabs here simply because they are a much more easy angle wall and especially if they've never done any climbing before that's a good way to just get someone's confidence on the walls it's very easy to climb up all the holes are quite large and uh, once they've done that we can try and see if they're happy to be challenged on a much more vertical panel and also it's much taller than these slab walls here That was a 
a very enjoyable uh, workout, at least for me, not for Elena. <laughs> it was, I'm sure it's a workout on any level, regardless of what level you climb at. Indeed. Everyone has had a workout. So we want to thank Tig for, for helping us out and no back to the studio. Okay. <laughs> Well, that, that was, if I say it was a lot of fun, it was an understatement. And you could see that I, I got Elena to climb just a well, few huh, steps. That was love overcoming a little bit, yes. not all. <laughs> but I still managed to do a little bit just That's to right. please but him. But we really yeah. enjoyed ourselves. <laughs> so the, the thing about love being powerful, love is powerful, but love on its own is not enough. It's important that you couple the love you have with uh, an intelligent decision to solve the problems you face in your mm -hmm. relationship. Absolutely, I agree with that. Like we heard from uh, from you, I mean, without love, you see, and many people don't understand this, love is what makes a relationship work. Love is what is understanding. Of course, we, you know, as time goes by, we need to mature. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, people go through many problems in marriage and they will always go through problems. Mm -hmm. Every People change, yes. there's different faces, different, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, okay, you are 30 and then you go on to be 40. There's stages of your life, you change, things mm -hmm. around you change. So love grows mm -hmm. as, you, as you go along together, yes. you know, mm -hmm. understanding what your role is towards one another. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you see love overcoming that's many it. things, many, many things. That's it. I'd like to thank Carol and Roger for being yes, here. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you for and having us. And I want to tell you something. Um, when you really love someone, and really, and I mean, you don't love the person just in the beginning because it's a new thing, but when you really love someone, you're willing to look not just at the person's flaws, at the person's mistakes, at the person's different... Um, culture, you, you don't focus on that because there is so much more uh, to the person, positive things. So true love is only powerful when you can love the person in spite of their little different things to who you are. Remember that when you really love someone, if the person has flaws and mistakes, you love them even more in spite of those things. That is the true powerful love that we are talking about. Okay? Until next time. Have a wonderful evening.